Okay, originally I had a very different video planned for this February 1st episode of The Great Show of Greyhounds. But then during the last week of January, a polar vortex from the Arctic North descended into the United States Midwest, bringing record cold temperatures and dangerous wind chills. So I felt it was more relevant to make a video about how we prevented our dog's feet from freezing when we let them out for bathroom breaks. For a good week or so, the National Weather Service had been warning us that this extreme cold front was coming, which provided us a little time to prepare. As is normal in January in Iowa, it was already pretty cold, so Heather and I were well aware of what our challenges would be. We've had several snow systems come through over the last two weeks, and it's really starting to pile up. The snow's almost a foot deep, which, I mean, I know greyhounds are tall and everything, but this is up to their elbows when they come outside to go to the bathroom, and it's freezing their feet, so instead they're just going in the house. So I'm out here with the snowblower, and I'm snow blowing the backyard just so that they got a open area to go in. I got half of the backyard opened up and then I made a loop through the other half so that they could run laps. They were getting pretty stir crazy in the house. See how much you like your little path? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need some zoomies. Yeah. This time of year, when it isn't always ideal to take them for walks, we will do some basic training indoors. The different training exercises will make them think really hard about what they need to do, and that will help expel a lot of that excess energy. Opening up half the backyard worked for a few days to keep their feet warm enough while they took forever to find that perfect spot. But the tender feet returned once the temperatures began to dip below zero. And we knew that in order to get through these next few days during this polar vortex, we would need some sort of covering for their feet. Every pet store and farm supply store in town were completely sold out of dog boots because every pet owner knew that footwear was going to be essential for the next few days. So we quickly ordered a few varieties for next day delivery off of Amazon. This first example I have here is from Fashion Pet. It's their Arctic Fleece Boots. They have this non-skid sole here for traction and a Velcro strap affixed to the back side. These ones are pretty cheap. Hold definitely the back. <laughs> mate, like... mate, walk over here. <laughs> and now we are in the dark with fresh snow coming down, looking for all the booties that Mate has lost in the snow. I found one. That is not a shoe. Now, I think these boots would work just fine if doing leash walking down a sidewalk, but in our experience in the backyard, they came off in deep snow. We also ordered Protex Paws rubber dog boots. The material that it's made out of reminds me a lot of a birthday balloon, but thicker. Most greyhounds will probably fit into the medium size, which is blue. Wilson is much larger than Made in Olive, so we did get these purple larges for him, but he fits in these blue ones just fine. Because we knew the temperature was gonna get down to negative 30 degrees, we got these little toddler-sized socks to put inside those rubber boots just for some extra insulation. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with these Protex Paws uh, rubber dog boots. They're great for being a liner between their paw and the snow. Though, um, we have noticed that occasionally their nails may tear through the material, but they come in a 12-pack, so... It takes about 10 minutes to bundle up all three of our dogs with their socks and their rubber boots and then get them into their winter coats, but it is well worth it. The dogs are much more comfortable and have stopped going to the bathroom indoors now that they're willing to go outside for more than 45 seconds. Even still, the National Weather Service has explained that with ambient temperatures less than negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, with wind chills lower than negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it is possible to get frostbite after only five minutes. It is really important that I keep my eye on them when I let them out to go to the bathroom as I might need to go and get them. 
When dogs feel their limbs beginning to freeze, rather than rush to where it's warm, they just collapse on the ground and continue freezing. So I need to be prepared to grab them by their collar and run them inside, or pick them up and carry them. Yeah. Okay, get back inside. Come on, Brian, I need your help. Oh, you want me to carry her? Yes. And if you need to carry them, make sure you lift with your legs. For this episode's photo finish, I have a picture of the boots that we got in a medium size. I encourage all of you to post pictures on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GreatShow with the hashtag photo finish of the different boots you are using with the appropriate size. If you're interested in trying out for yourself the boots that I've reviewed in this video, I'll put their Amazon purchase links in this video's description and you can let me know in the comments what you think. We had to acquire these boots on short notice, so we didn't really have time to research the quality of these brands. So in addition to your pictures, I would appreciate in the comments if you list any pros and cons that you found with the boots that you have at home. And it looks like my beard and mustache are freezing, so we need to wrap this video up. In the next episode of The Great Show, I'm going to show you my original video I had planned, where we teach a foster how to climb these stairs. A link to that episode, as well as the previous, can be found over here. Down below is a link to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also follow us on social media at Great Show. Check out this program at youtube.com slash greatshow, and you have a great day.